If you are in the area of Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, PA, come to Tables and Towers. We are located in Westminster, Maryland. We host huge case tournaments where we usually give out two to three cases. Uh, we do have a few coming up. And Zade is actually probably going to be streaming these. Whoop, whoop. So, uh, so if you guys are a fan, you better be watching. What's up, guys? Zade here. I'm my boy, Louie. And what do you got for us today? So I went 5-0 last weekend at the Inventories Remote Duel Regional with Cybers Eldritch, 60 cards. Any shout-outs before we get into the profile? Uh, shout-outs to my store tables and towers and my crew there, Jordan, Josh, Elmer, Alex, Joe. Yeah. Hell yeah, let's get into it then. All right. So we'll start off with the Cybers package. So we do three Dotscapers, three Firewall Guardians, and three Cybers Gadgets. So Firewall Guardian is your worst one out of them, but you want to be able to see one of these in your opening hand along with Hand Traps and the Brave Engine. What makes it so the that's worst? Why yeah. Um... It's just not, like, you have to link it off for its effect to go off to summon itself back. Mm -hmm. Compared to Dotscaper, where if it's sent to the graveyard in any way, it just returns. And so the Cybers Gadget has that additional effect where it summons a guy from Grave occasionally. Yeah, so a lot of times during the regional, I actually would use his effect to bring back souls to be able to draw extra cards the turn after I use souls. That's dirty. So that came up a lot, yeah. So these two are definitely the best. This one's the worst. Uh, one of these usually always comes out when I'm going into game two and I'm going second. I usually just keep these in. Because you're getting to see the extra card, the ratios are okay to go down a little bit? Yes. Yeah. So that's it for my Cybers package. Um, I don't run Signet Mining just because I want to get it ashed because if that card gets ashed and i don't really have any follow-up plays then pretty much stuck there i think that's fair that card's a neg one in theory when you could just yeah. play another cybers that does the same thing correct um and then we'll get into my hand traps this is a lot of them <laughs> uh, three, three imperms one lancia three effect veilers three nibiru's two drolls Ghost Ogres, 3 Ash. Oh, so, 18? Yeah, 18. Yeah. So, in this format, honestly, if you open up a Hand Trap plus Nibiru, you're in that game. Um, So, I wanted to take advantage of the best Hand Traps, in my opinion, of the format. One flex spot would be the Drolls. Um, I... Also, top 48, uh, the Frederick Regional with this same deck list the weekend prior. And I was honestly very afraid of the Flunder matchup. Because that's a very hard matchup for us. It's because m -Pen's a card. Yeah, m -Pen's insane. And then you also have the Barrier Statue on top of that. Is that what the Lance right. is for, too? So that you have a Dagda target in that matchup? Yeah, so the Lancia is also here because I can Lancia and Scythe my opponent if I open up Souls in their turn. So the Lancia is just in here for the Dagda target, mm -hmm. and then I side additional Lancias just in case. Um, then Lancia also comes up with other matchups like Pure Eldritch. It's really good, and the Tenyi Brave deck. Good against. When you mentioned the Flunder matchup too, it's cool because... Uh... All your hand traps are playable in them in that matchup except Nib. Whereas right. I feel like oftentimes people's going second cards just aren't that strong against Flunder, but you've got 15 out of 18 of them are viable cards against that deck. And Droll and Lancey aren't like necessarily blowouts. Droll's a blowout if they don't shift her, but if yeah, if they don't shift her, Droll just like auto wins the game. And then Lancey is just nice to have because so, you can't scythe them. Right. And actually, at the Frederick Regional, I played three Flunder matchups. And thankfully, I saw the droll two out of the three. <laughs> we take so, those. Yeah. 
I was very happy about that. But um, last weekend when I went 5-0, I did not play a single Flunder matchup. This came up against the Speedroid matchup that I played and also the Base matchup. Oh, yeah, Base search is a shit ton. Yes. What did he end on yeah. when you drove him? Just a DPE? Well, thankfully, I opened up Droll plus, um, I think, Valor. Oh, so he ended on Anaconda Pass. <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, the Ogres are in here for the Brave package. Um, and also, when your opponent is playing one of the Hulk decks, it's really good to hit the Hulk with the Ghost Ogre if that's their first play. Because mm -hmm. that usually means if they're going into the Hulk right away, they don't have much else in their hand really extend with there's been times where i've ghost ogre to hauk and they've had to pass <laughs> ruin their day yeah it's good against flounder's um, map too it is it is uh for the upcoming format with despia now in here um i am going to be switching up the hand trap ratio a little and i'm going to include probably a third droll and Ghost spells just because ghost spelling a branded in red is very powerful. Oh yeah, that's super high impact. Yeah, so that's probably some of the changes I'm gonna make, and I might go down on Valor by one. Why Valor over Imperm? Do you value the Imperm more? I do because I can use Imperm during either player's turn. Um, if I don't have any cards on my board, and sometimes this card is literally just Celine and help target. That's true. That's true. Uh, so that's my hand trap ratios. And we'll get into the brave package next. So one foolish. I consider this in the brave package just because usually I'm sending the water enchantress. And your deck it like has double utility though because you could send a dot scaper as an extender. Yes, I have golden had to Lord. do that a few times. And I've had to send golden lord a few times when I needed it. Uh, one Faithful, two Rites, one Griffin, and three Water Enchanters. Um, I have been back and forth on a second Faithful. That was my first question, or what my first question was going to be. Why only one? So, this deck, even though it's 60 cards, it is a very tight deck. Um, Just because you run so many hand traps... So, when I was testing, having the second Faithful didn't come up as much as having more impactful hand traps. I would rather see hands that have two hand traps compared to the chance of drawing double Faithful. Mm -hmm. um, and usually, if my Faithful does get ogred, I have everything else in my deck, like the Eldritch Package or you know my DPE to help me win that game. Your deck's already a little grindier than the other decks that are playing the Double Fateful. It is. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll test it out again. As of right now, this is the ratio I'm probably going to stick with. Um, it does hurt when it gets ogred, but, you know, I like I said, I have other ways to win the game. So also, like, the second one comes up sometimes when you get to send your Faithful Adventure and your Equip Spell off of the Souls for the free draw to. And then yes. if you get access to right, being able to get Faithful again, just, it feels insane. Yeah. yeah so that's definitely something that I am going to test out in the future. Um, if I do stick with this deck during the Despia format. Mm -hmm. So then, the next engine is the Eldritch Engine. My favorite portion of the deck. <laughs> so we only run one Golden Lord. Three Eldlands, three Sanguines, three Conks, and one Hakero. So this is another package where I have messed with the ratios a lot. And I found that I prefer the three Conquistadors over and two Conquistadors to Hakeros. This card is really only good for DPE, in my opinion. Like, some rogue decks it's good against, and sometimes it's good against the mirror match during a grind game, like with the Eldritch and whatnot. But really, that's only there for DPE. 
And this just hits the Flunder matchup hard with Map. And get rid of M-Pen. Just so many utilities for this card. Yeah, as someone that's been playing pure Eldritch here, I, I think Conquistador is like vastly stronger. I think I'd agree with your ratios for this deck. It's like the standard Eldritch decks play 3-2, but you're not committing as much to the Eldritch engine. And if I'm cutting down pieces, Hawkwero would be the first to go. Yeah, and I usually save this for like when I need it for the DP. Hmm. Um, Curse Eldritch really so insane in this deck too. It's, the card's free. Just because of Magician Souls too. Yeah, like I don't play it in in my like just Eldritch deck, but in this deck you send it all souls, you get insane value, and then you DPE pop one of the ones that you set so that you can get matching conk and elixirs. Like that's yeah. really strong. Now the one thing I do have to say about the Eldritch package is there are times where I wish I had a second Eldritch. Um whether or not I would bump it, that's questionable. Um, but there has been times where I have wanted the second one. Can you think of some of the instances where it comes up? Like, is it getting banished making you want a second one? Or is it like having access to two would give you the ability to go to lethal? Or what is it? So, it honestly is when it gets banished. Um, One of my matchups was Invoked Eldritch. Oh, and, and he probably took it to make Macabre. He did. Then I'm just stuck with these dead Eldlixers. So there's a lot of times where I just have Eldlixers on my board because this is gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting there. Um, That was actually when I lost to that guy game two was because he banished my Eldlich. And this was the main engine that I drew. So I didn't really have much to do against him. So it like completely hinders the Eldritch grind aspect of it. It does. If they don't banish it, then this card is just insane. Usually the the card that helps me push for game. Yeah, thirty five hundred is huge. <laughs> and being able to go into the lineup. Yeah, that and too. And bring it back like that's super powerful too. I think it's cool too that you have four when you want to draw it because you have the three curse and then the one, and so you have like spot removal for game ones against like quote unquote rogue decks that would have cards that other other like big scythe combo decks just don't have outs to right but yeah that's it for that engine uh next small dpe engine two fusion destiny celestial dasher so do you like drawing the fusion destiny because i've seen some of the pile decks go down to one fusion destiny but I don't know how I feel about that, because drawing that card feels OP. I would never go down to one, honestly. It's like, for the same reason you said, like, it's just a powerful card. If I've already resolved it, then the other Fusion Destiny is just Souls food. So, yeah, I, I would never change it to one. If you draw it, and then you go into, like, your normal play with one of your Cybers guys, too, then, like... You can either put the Fusion Destiny back with the guy that draws if you want to, or you can, like, hold it, and then if they veil or the Anaconda, you just, like, laugh at them and activate the Fusion Destiny. Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, this package is just insanely powerful. Meta-defining. Card's crazy. It is. Then we get to my Souls package. Two prep, two illusion, two souls. Um, I've seen a lot of builds mess around with this ratio... And I believe this is probably one of the best ratios. Like, could go down on one prep from that. Um, I've seen some people just do one and one. But one and one seems evil to me. Because, like, you draw both and you're shitted on. It is yeah, 60, it, so that won't happen too often. But when it does, you're going to want to end it all. Right. And the reason I want this ratio is because... I want my opening hand to be a Cybers plus this. Mm -hmm. That way I can keep the Dagda on board with the DPE, so I'm hitting you with Scythe and Lancia on your turn. And it's like, good luck and playing through that. <laughs> it's just too powerful. So, that is that. One and then question the last real quick before you leave those. Do you, pl you play Dark Charmer, right? 
Oh, absolutely. The the only thing I could maybe see would be like three souls, two illusion, one prep, so that you have an additional one to search off the charmer. I don't know if that's correct or not, but like that's just ratios I've seen before. Yeah, that could be an option. Honestly, whenever I summon one of the charmers, I have won that game. Mm -hmm. It's usually a just push like, for lethal. Yeah, because of access code. So, you know, that could be something I play around with. Um, for this, like, again, it's just soul speed. Mm -hmm. But, it, yeah, it can be pitched if you draw it in tandem with souls. And also deck yeah. fins one to get you to the same spot. So it plays in a draw a little harder, but it's also just, like, when it goes off, it's way more valuable. You got the deck thin one. You have the potential to pitch it to draw. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. Like I, I can play around with that and see how it works out. But I did like these ratios for the regional. My last is cards scythe called by the wind um, cons. I this was a last minute decision for me. Um, I want to say it was another hand trap. I. I just saw the implications to this. I think that card oh. now is like insane, insane. Because people to play around super poly, even game ones, are using the mm -hmm. DPE to pop Anaconda. So if you draw a call by, you can just draw phase, banish the DPE. And like, I'm playing that in my trap deck now. It just yeah. feels so high impact. Yeah. And, you know, there's a reason this card's a one. Like, the card's super powerful. Um, It came up a lot. Surprisingly, in my 60 card deck, I drew this card a lot. <laughs> so I was not unhappy with that. Um, yeah, and then Scythe is Scythe. I've seen a lot of people starting to cut Scythe out of their decks. I, not a lot of people are main decking Chalice anymore or like Droplet. So if you hit people with a Scythe, you're pretty much going to be winning that. Yeah, you just steal the game one. And in a 60 yes. card deck, if you brick on the scythe, like that's going to happen a lot less than you're going to win the die roll and win because of the scythe, I feel like. Right. And funny you mentioned the die roll. I won one die roll last weekend during the regional. Jeez. And I still won 5 out because yeah. I won all the hand traps. Yeah, good thing you have 18 hand traps to keep you going. Right. I, um, um, I was playing a deck similar to this, the, a Cybers one on Dueling Book a while back, and... I, I wasn't playing Scythe in it, but everybody assumed I was. So once I made the Dagda, they scooped. It was insane. I won so many game yeah. ones not playing the Scythe. But I feel like in a real-life tournament, people don't just scoop at first sight of a Dagda. So you kind of want right. to play the Scythe. You know, the reason I chose to run this deck, um, I was playing the 10 Ye Brave deck at the Philly Regional. Mm -hmm. And my losses that day were to Scythe. Was the only losses I had is when I got Scythe. So I was like, okay, let's play a deck that can grind. Let's play a deck that can what's beating me in a different way. So that's why I chose to run this deck. Yes, because this deck gets the Scythe, but if they get Scythe, you still have Eldlich and Brave Engines and Souls to draw on hand traps. Like, there's only nine cards in your deck that lose to Scythe, and it's the nine Cybers monsters. Right, and I never lost to a Scythe. That's a really good point, actually, is that this deck is pretty resilient to that. Yeah, and that's the you know one of the big reasons again why I chose to play this deck. So that was sixty cards in the main. Uh, we'll do the extra next. So we got Link Disciple and two Devotees. This is part of your one card DPE Scythe Lock combo. So you get the Disciple out one of your cyberses, then you go into the devotee, come into tokens, get your dagda, get your verte, and you are set up. So you playing one and two, it only gives you the option to make the line once, right? So if they were to interrupt it, what's your follow up, I guess? So my follow up would just be try the grind game with my Eldritch and my Brave mm -hmm. Engine. Um and we'll get into a piece of my deck soon in my extra deck where if they do interrupt this it really doesn't matter because i should be able to do it again in a different way the following turn wow sick we do the one link spider um 
this is for instances where you have your brave token and they stop your uh faithful from searching the griffin mm. and you have to go into this to make the verte um it's also come up where i get in the and i go into link spider with the nibiru token and still go into verte so that has happened link rebo this card is super undervalued in my opinion um We'll put this card on the board uh, against my Tenny Sword Soul matchup. I knew they had the blackout. So I made this first, and they didn't know what this card did. <laughs> so you contribute this card to negate a trap. That so seems I was really strong in matchups like that, where you know they're going to have a searchable, insane trap. Yes. And when you read that they have an imperm, bring this card out so that you make sure that your verte will resolve. And it also seems like, really strong in a lot of rogue matchups. Like if you play against Tri Brigade or something, you could stop the revolt. If you play against yes. trap decks, you can stop traps. <laughs> yeah, and it's come up in the Eldritch matchup. And it's just insane to me like how many people don't read this card. And just think it's players like, don't know how to oh, read. <laughs> <laughs> they just think like, oh, it's a Cyber Slink one. Like he just had to go into it to like, you know, revive his Dotscape or whatnot. And I'm like, nope, I'm doing it because I have a read on an Imperm. So this card is super powerful in this deck. Um, you run the Light and Dark Charmer. These cards are insane. Uh, they shouldn't have came out with these, honestly. These are just ways to go into access code because you can go into selene because they're both spellcasters i like that your deck has a search target for each one too if it were to die because dark can get souls and light can get valor yes yeah so these are just super powerful um at the frederick regional my lina stole a trouble sunny <laughs> i was able to kill them with that this huge stole... yeah this has stolen so many vertes i could resolve their verte in my DPE, um, I've stolen a Souls to resolve Souls effect. Like, these cards are just ridiculous. Um, I've stolen Ghost Ogres, hit their Faithful Adventure. So, yeah, these cards are ridiculous. And then the one, Halky Fibrex. Um, there are instances where you have to go into Halk in order to access Code Talker them. It's yeah, just for the it, climb. That's literally all it's for. Uh, you really don't summon it too much, but when you do need to go for game, this is perfect. You ever summon a Ghost Ogre off it as an interruption? I have it sometimes. I love when and that gets to come I'm, up. It feels really strong. Yeah, usually I'm just summoning the Veiler. But yeah, I have summoned a Ghost Ogre a few times. Then there is one flex spot for this extra deck, in my opinion, and I chose to put in Phoenix. Um, I've seen a lot of people in Unicorn over Phoenix, but I value the Link 2 rather than the Link 3. I'm guessing the Link 3 is just for access code climbing. Yes. So why do you prefer it being Phoenix? Just because of, like, easy to access? It's easy to access. Its effect comes up because sometimes back row does hurt me. Um, but... I, it just in my testing, the Phoenix came up a lot more than the Unicorn. Mm -hmm. We had the Dagda. This Dagda gets me in my Scythe, Lancia stuff. Then I run Double Verte. I like so, that a lot. There was a time in my round two when I played against Tenny Sword Soul where they blackouted me. And I still had extenders through the second Verte on the board and were shocked that I was running two. I can't believe people are still in shock about two. I feel like two's becoming the wave. Because even like if I'm against your deck, right, and I've got Nib in hand, I'm going to probably hold Nib till the Summit of Anaconda. And if I do that, you just have to make Link Spider with the token. And then if you have Magician Souls, I get DP'd again. And at that point, your Dag does already resolve to set the scythe. So like I just get comboed out. Right. Yeah, so the second Verte definitely does come up, and also if they negate my first Verte, then I have the second one for next turn. 
Yeah, if, if it gets they don't... Baylor Imperm, you don't want to completely lose access to DPE. Right. So, yeah, this... That's another good goal. reason to be playing two Fusion Destiny, too. Because if the first one gets Valored, you do have access to the cards still throughout the game. Yeah, so I definitely wouldn't change this. I think two is necessary for this deck. <clears throat> and then we have DPE for the Verte, then Selene access code. For Lethal. Um, Selene, yeah, Selene... Having enough spells is not hard. Usually my opponent has enough spells for me to activate this card. Selena's so crazy in this deck, too, because, like, on your turn zero, if you use souls to make your board, and then on your turn, on the next turn you get, you're using the access code for the push. You can, like, summon Valor off Halk, but then summon back the souls off Selene. And I believe Selene doesn't negate the effects, right? So you get to use souls to draw again. Um... It does not negate the effects, no. Yeah, so you'd be able to souls again and then climb into the access code. That, like, that seems extra strong when you have such a powerful spellcaster already in Grieve. Yeah, yeah, so Selene is ridiculous. Like, it definitely deserves the price point it is at right now. And if you don't have tuner access, you can still go into Selene because both of the charmers are spellcasters. So say you go, like, Eldritch Trap plus Golden Lord into Lina, take any light from their grave, it could be a Lancia, and you have no tuners on board, but you still have Spellcaster and another monster makes a lean. Like, that card seems insane in your deck. I I actually did the Charmer route more than the Halk route. You probably have access to more non-tuners than tuners. The only way I could think that you're putting a tuner on board is normal summoning a hand trap, or if you already have Golden Lord, you can Elixir into Ash. On yes. their end phase, and then on your turn, make it into health. Yeah. yeah. So, Selene is just super powerful in this deck. So, we'll get into the side deck next. Um, there are a little couple wacky ratios in here. Just because I was undecided, but it ended up working out for me. <laughs> um, so, I only side deck one extra Lancia. So, Lancia's good. There's a lot of matchups that, like, don't really need it. And I can dag it out anyway. So I just chose to run one Lancia extra in the side. Yeah, there's not a lot of matchups I really want to draw that card against right now. Like, even Fluanderies, I feel like I'd rather draw, like, a Droll or something. Or Ash, Imperm. Yeah, I would absolutely rather draw the Droll. The cool thing with Lancia, though, against the Fluandries deck in particular, is a lot of your hand traps get killed by the shifter, but Lancia turns that shifter off for the turn, so then you can draw them. So that plus draw is like an FTK against the deck. Correct. Yeah, so then I did two Ghost Reapers. Um, for this regional, I went down to two instead of three so I could fit other things into my side deck um just because i did learn a lot from the frederick regional so this card has hit an access code talker it's her verte it's a dpe um i've hit the charmers with it it's anything that i think is going to be troublesome for me this card is hit whatever they could hypothetically seal the game with on the spot you're like ah you're not doing that buddy yeah so typically like i'll hold this until they commit I want my opponent to waste as many cards as possible before I shotgun this card. That card seems insane in response to an Anaconda effect. Because then even if they're playing two Anaconda, like, or if they drew one of the Fusion Destinies, and if you Valored, they'd have the follow-up. But Cherries, they don't get that card the rest of the duel. Right. So I'm just leaving them with dead cards. Deck. So this is like one card that I'm unsure if I'm going to keep for the upcoming format. It worked amazing for me the last two weekends. Just depends on how viable Despia is, really. Correct, yeah. Um, and then the Gamma package. So, I see some people main decking this package. I absolutely have a love and hate relationship with this package. Because this card loves me. <laughs> um, and I even run the rare and it still comes to my hand somehow. In but, this deck, the card doesn't seem like it would be that crazy main, because I can't think of a lot of cards you have that's going to force the activation. Because your main right. starters are normal summons. Yes. So, 
Yeah, like this package is just super insane when I'm going second. Um, which is another reason it's in the side. Like I really only want it when I'm going second. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'll swap out hand traps that don't do anything for me. So like against the Flunder matchup, I'll put these in and take out the Nibirus. Yeah, so that I just card's have... really strong against Flu too, because it takes the body off the board as well. So now they need an additional monster in order to even conduct a tribute summon. Yeah, so it I I love this engine in the side for last weekend. Um and then double token collector. So at the Frederick Regional, I only ran one. And I realize, oh, everybody's summoning tokens. Yeah, literally so, every deck. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. If you're able to hit this on the Tenyi Brave or even Pure Sword Soul, which is seeing a lot of play now, you're going to win. Um, I played against two Tenyi Sword Souls in the past two weeks, and this card just blew them out. I also personally yeah. love the hand traps that, in a deck where you're playing 20-plus hand traps post-side, I love the hand traps that if you draw a hand of five hand traps and one of them puts itself on board... Then on your following turn, you could still make Anaconda, even if you draw no combo piece. Right, and it's nice because I can always get this off my board because all my monsters are light and dark. So I can always go into a Charmer when I need to go into my adventure package. And then you have Token Collector locked and loaded again to stop them when they try to push. Yes. So this card... So I took out one of the cherries to add the second one. I'm assuming you don't regret it. That card's probably performing really well. Yeah, I almost wish I ran three, actually. Um, and then triple crossout designator. So this has been back and forth with me between this and Artifact Sanctum. But a deck that runs 18 hand traps, this card is insane. Now, I wish I would have seen it more often. I really feel like it's an impactful card this format hmm. but in theory like in a deck that runs so many hand traps and runs the brave package and the DPE package like this card just seems free when you go first right you're uh, are you I don't know what you're taking out when you go first to put those in but are you just siding that in or would you include like one token collector or like a cherries or do you side any really of what I'm playing against so, there were times where, like, I would only put these in. But if then, you felt like yeah. you had the read that they might be siding into some of those other cards, then you're going to put those cards in, too? Yeah, and I usually pay a lot of attention to how many cards my opponent's siding in. I try to make my read based on that. Yeah, try to just do what you can with all the information given to you during any given game. Yeah. So... I, I'm, it's debatable, like whether or not I'm going to keep this card in. Um, but I did like it for the regional. And last card, three lightning storms. How'd that card so, work for you? That was a blowout card. What matchup? Was actually, yeah, it, it was ridiculous. Which um, matchups did it feel best in? So it was good against the trap Eldritch deck I played. A minus the when he revealed the heavenly guy. Yeah, Lord of Heavenly Spheres. Yeah, that that was not fun because I was just chilling with this in hand. I waited for him to summon it, and then my next turn I lightning stormed him. And then won the game from there. Um this card, like because Trap Eldritch is such a big deck right now, I feel like this card is necessary. Um the only thing like Twin Twister might be better in this card just because against the Flu Under match, hitting the um, Dreaming Town on standby phase is super oh, impactful. Yeah, dude, Twin Twister, I feel like, is an FTK against Flu Underies. You hit their trap and you hit their map, and now what? They You get your yeah. turn back. It's just your turn again, not our turn anymore. Exactly. So that would be like one thing that I might test a little just switching out these for the twin twisters or running these and taking out these for triple twin twister but yeah that's my side 
I feel like every card in my side deck worked well for me. Is there a case to play two Lightning Storm and one Harpy's Feather Duster? Or do you like... Is it it the the fact that it can hit monsters too that would make it something you'd rather just play three of instead of two one? I do like the fact that it hits monsters too because a lot of people aren't playing around this. Now, in my opinion, like they're just putting their monsters in attack position. Not respecting Um, the card. They're not. And I'm trying to think back, like, I don't think I ever had to hit monsters with this. Even, like, in the Sword Soul matchup, if you can at least just Lightning Storm their back row and hit their um, Blackout, like, that could be super impactful. Because, like, if they Blackout my Link Disciple, Link Devotee, then I better hope I have some follow-up. I think one other pro of cutting one for a Feather Duster would be, like, if you're against a Trap Eldritch deck or a strategy like that, you probably side those in even going first, right? Yes. But then yeah. your um your Faithful Adventure is going to make the Lightning Storm dead. And so now you're right. like, you got to hope that they can address your cards in order for you to be able to address theirs. But the Duster would just be able to, like, at any point in the duel activate. Yeah, and, you know, again, funny you bring that up. Last night when I played you... Um, I had the faithful up when I drew this. Yeah, and if that if you had a one third chance of that being Duster, there was like a one third chance that I would have got blown out probably, depending on right. what I had set. Yeah, so that's also another thing to play around with. Um, I guess I can talk about my matchups a little. Last weekend, so round one, I played speed roids. Thankfully, uh, running a store, I get to see a lot of. Decks, and Speedroids is one of the decks that one of my local players plays. So I know exactly what to stop in that deck. Bro, imagine so, being a Speedroid player thinking, I'm going to enter this regional. Nobody's going to know what my deck does. Round one, your opponent knows what your deck does. I'd be pissed. <laughs> yeah, like, he never got Crystal Wing out once. Because I knew what to hit. So that, that was a good feeling. So I 2 owed him. Uh, round two, played Tenny Sword Soul. That matchup, uh, Token Collector sealed that game too for me. And round three, I played Trap Eldritch. Uh, that was a two-one match. Um, game one, I lost to Gozen Match. Field Drain. Uh, that is very hard for me to play against. Oh yeah, those cards are crazy in tandem with one another. Yeah, and then game two and three, it was just the battle of the DPEs, and I drew called by the grief. <laughs> We take those. Yeah. Wait, the, yeah, the trap is. Eldritch dude was playing DPE in his build? Yes. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah. It was very interesting and not expected. I tested um, that once but, before, but I didn't like dead drawing the monsters. Yeah, like, it it doesn't really seem super good in that deck. But, I don't know. He, he also topped the regional. And... It was definitely interesting. Um, round four, I played against Invoked, Eldritch, Dragoon. Uh, that was a 2-1. I lost game one to Dragoon. Yeah, that card so, sometimes is just a unit when you're not prepared for it. So I had the out to it. I was climbing into my access code talker. I had access DPE out, and he main deck super poly. Oh, no. Yep, so I got hit with the starting Venom, and I scooped. Um, game three ended because I was able to access code. I baited out his Dragoon, added up to 5,000 attack, and then I access code talker for <laughs> 53. Just one from there. So that, that was definitely an interesting matchup. Uh, that is the matchup where my Eldritch did get banished by Invocation, and that was a bad feeling. Um, and then round five, I played against Based. That was also a 2-1 um, so, uh, game that I lost in that match. I just, he was out grinding me. There was nothing I could really do. Which is weird to hear because base grind game's not crazy, but he must have just like stopped you in the right spots. Because your deck he seems did. like in the grind it's going to win most of the time, but occasionally it just can't win every time. If I remember correctly, I think he ghost build my DPE. Oh. And that pretty much sealed the deal there. Yeah. That's my list. 
Hell yeah, you got any final words, any final shout outs before we round it out? Um, just if you are in the area of Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, PA, come to Tables and Towers. We are located in Westminster, Maryland. We host huge case tournaments where we usually give out two to three cases. Uh, we do have a few coming up, and Zade is actually probably going to be streaming these. Whoop, whoop. So, on, so if you guys are a fan, you better be watching. On Saturday, May 14th, we have a Ghost from the Past 2 case tournament. And yesterday, there were some leaks from Ghost from the Past 2, and the set seems super crazy. Definitely come out for that. And then on June 4th, we have a Dimension Force 3v3 tournament which there are not a lot of 3v3s out there, so this is definitely a good time to bring your teammates together to play in an event. And then Saturday, June 11th, we have a Dimension Force case tournament. That is just a 1v1. And we are very excited for these events to come up. And I definitely co-signed the shop too, guys. I went for my first time yesterday and for the, um, what was the event called? The Back to Locals <laughs> win a mat thing? The back to duel, yeah, yeah, back and, to uh, duel, and I won the live twin man and had a great time there. So if y'all are in the area, I recommend checking it out. Like I co-signed the shop; that place is nice.